What's good, party people? Madism TV, Madism Sports. It's in effect, we running a little early today. What up, Spliffy? What's happening? You hear me? You good? Nah, what are you talking about? Oh, you know what? I'm bugging. But nah, here you go. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I'm trying to bring you in. You're spinning right now. Once you hop out, hop back in. Cliff, hop out, hop back in. Yes, yeah, so this is Madison Sports, Madison TV. We here every week, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We start a little early today. Uh, we have a special.
Here we go, live and direct. Family, what's going on? What's happening? What's happening, huh? Oh, man, hold on. Oh, shit. <clears throat> nah, uh, my microphone's not on. Mike, check one, two, one, two. Mike, nah, it has nothing to do with it. I messed up. She's not on. Mike, check one, two, one, two. Mike, check one, two. Mike, check one, two, one, two. One, two. What's up, coach? Mike, check. There we What's go. Up, Wes? How's that, guys? We good. So good. good. Yeah. I hear you fine. It, it, it's been good, you don't need the headphones. Yeah, I don't need the headphones. Yeah, man. It's uh sorry about that. Technical difficulties, but we know we're doing our thing. Yeah, yeah. Um so what I'm gonna do is we still waiting for the guests to enter the green room. Glad you guys are here early. I got screwed up a little bit, but we on point. I'm going to uh Pull up a little video so we can get to inviting folks. But while I do that, tell me something good. Y'all, how's your week? Um, we can go ahead. Oh, I'm still in my feelings. I'm in my cowboy feelings. That's why I'm and, representing the Knicks tonight. So and well, you should be in your cowboy feelings. <laughs> but you know, there's a silver lining. Yeah, they, they, they should beat the Eagles this week with no Jalen Hurt. That, that's, that's what I'm still, saying. That's a silver lining. Y'all, y'all, y'all still running on a third stringer, too. So, okay, the, the Cowboys getting a little bit stronger. All the teams uh, ahead of us are getting a little weaker. So, uh, you know, that's the um, silver I, I lining. Would, I wouldn't call Purdy. Peace, 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 love, unity. Safely having fun. Uh oh. Sorry about that. Pur- Pur- Purdy doing his thing. He is. But you know the lack of experience is gonna go rear its head at some point. They getting weaker, they getting weaker with with players, but they're not getting weaker in underneath the shirt, underneath the jersey, yeah. with the heart. That's that, true. That, that defense is special. <laughs> that defense Yo, man, is special. stop doing stop doing interviews and go play ball. Stop yeah. doing podcasts. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, that's that said. We're gonna do what we do. Invite, like. Share, subscribe, hit the bell. Come on, people. Real hip hop for the people. Yeah. 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 Peace, peace, love, unity. Unity. Safety, fun. Real hip hop for the people. It's an engagement, it's a demonstration. Using hip hop culture to get you activated. Let the people hear the bass and the vibrations of love, peace, unity. And watch them add on. It's a culture. It's not just rapping. It's not what we do. It's how we do it. We're doing it right here, Springfield Avenue, between Bergen and Plum. 24 hours straight, man. It's crazy. Shit. We the people. Huh. The people of the culture. Yeah, Ron Lawrence. Fire. The hip hop culture. Yo, we love rap. Yeah, love we it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. But it's really about the culture. Yeah, let them know how. The realness. The culture. Yeah. What up, man? You know a hard hit makes a soft behind. Uh-huh. If I only knew my schoolwork like I knew them rhymes. What? Mom upside my head, I'm trying to memorize every line. Nato. High power rap breaks super rhymes. Uh-huh. Deep into the culture, didn't even know it. Young entrepreneurs spit bars like a poet in a rush to be mature behind bars when we blow it. In the bowl that rappers to a mature to outgrow it. It was more than just music, something next to breathing. I get giddy like a baby trying to spit while I'm feeding. Uh-huh. The mic I'll be squeezing, dropping Facts like, like I'm teaching, yeah. leaking flows for the perfect beat seeking. Mama used to say, take your time, young man. Uh-huh. But I'm trying to fill a light so you can see when I tan. Uh-huh. I'm like one I never ran. I'm a fan, but never stand. Uh-huh. Just take a black way to the east, exiting out the clan. But no one stopped to think about the people. Pleblo, Unido, grassroots, Steve Vico. Rule number one, never forget the people. The people. I live that. I live that. I get that. I get that. all in it. No gimmicks, straight facts. Straight facts. From the start, I'm the light from the dark. Born from black art. Knew my, part. I knew my part, daddy gave me, gave mama me. made me, me. Nook raised me, hip hop saved me. 
for the culture now, for the black and brown, happy and underground, sun up the sundown. Till my people get out, north the to town south, spread like word of mouth, word of mouth. While you cowards is hooded, we battle the bullet, black lives to the fullest, to the fullest. Out here to the end, stronger together, that's the day we win. But no one stopped to think about the people. Holy is a great having a present. We are. But no one stopped to think about the people. The legends before me are ones I want to get it like. But hitting quick hit different when hitting right. Mob ties, this thing of ours is birthrights. Who's next for the culture and them searchlights? Do it to it, this music, I'm trying to talk through it. Every plan on my own, I watch the lot do it. Airborne to skiki, like a window through it. Trumpets blow, this song's here, melodic ruins. Think for it before they have to think for them. Boom, bap, I talk dead and live enormous. Informers when present and your boy performing. Especially when them drums snap by Brian Lawrence do it all that poet talk of the line crosser many hot and eyes be by your flying saucers make it worth it I can't take no people offers sign sealed and delivered and you know the offer Holy is having but no one yeah. stopped to think about the people. Holy integrated, having omnipresence, we are yeah. the people. That was Real Hip Hop for the People by your man Hakeem Green, featuring Amiri Baraka Jr. Do It All Kelly, G. Simone, produced by Ron Lawrence. Big shout out to Rock Davis on the video direction. Big shout out to Media Famous. Yeah, got to shout out. Shout out all the principal folks. Of course, the great city of Newark, New Jersey, where we host the 24 Hours of Peace concert each and every year. And we're looking to expand it nationwide. So be on the lookout. Um, Episode 89 of Madism Sports. You know, my host panel, Wes Spliffy. Yeah, yeah. Doc. Um, we're waiting on our guest. She told me she had to be prompt, and then she sent me a message saying she was going to run a little late. <laughs> it is what it is. But, uh, you know, we've been having this ongoing conversation around women's basketball, the WNBA, of course, the Brittany Griner conversation. So I thought it'd be, you know, appropriate to get somebody who actually played in the league, got two championships under her belt. Yes. Foundational piece of the WNBA, still active with youth athletics and basketball, of course. So to get her perspective on things, I thought would be, you know, really, really dope. Only right. So we're just going to uh, kick it until she enters the building. Then we'll switch the conversation over to that young lady um but in the meantime in between time um maybe we should talk basketball since you know it ain't christmas yet we could just real talk about it real quick get it out the way and then talk about the gridiron after our guest pops in and pops out how about that i'm not so talking about playing. basketball why not well, we can talk about these next we, we can do that do we that. can do that you know what i'm not talking <laughs> about Hawk, so i'll well, talk about the next though the Lakers were doing uh, uh, all, all right, all things considered, until Mr. Glass uh, reared his. Uh, right, but they still caught a win yesterday. No, they didn't. Oh, yeah. they didn't yesterday, with, with, without yeah. Mr. Glass. Yeah, yeah. they caught. They caught. They, they got money. sunned. They got sunned last night. They got sunned. Yeah, yeah. but LeBron Russell literally and yeah, figuratively played last night. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, the Suns got their number. Play. LeBron ain't play. Come on, man, stop it. And and they still put up 120 points. No, nah. they did. They put up 104. It was it was 130 to 104. They lost by 26. They, lost they got 26. blown out. They put up 104 points. They got blown out. And, they, and what, what, what are they right now? They what 12 and 17? Huh? What are they 12 and 17 right now? Yeah, they in that 12 spot. I mean, so that that's what it all boils down to. You know, it can even creep up, you know, to, to the 10th spot. All right, I yeah. thought we were talking about the Knicks. 
Yeah, can we talk uh, about the Knicks? I don't want to talk about the Lakers. Definitely, we want we want to be on the uh, on 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 the uh, the the wagon, the real wagon. I mean, these cats are you know got the you know the, the longest winning streak in the league right now. They yeah. have seven. They have seven like games. Two, two and a half games behind third third um, seeding or whatever right now. Yeah, seventeen and thirteen in the East. Yeah, they playing uh, play good ball with no they play really good ball. The, the the point guard that they've been uh, needing for years, yep. Brunson is really filling that role. He's yep. doing his thing, doing and he's a winner. Guy. He's solidifying, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the newfound culture in New York. And um, you know, can they are they one of the top teams? No, because it's just really Milwaukee and Boston, and everybody behind them. I think in the East. I mean, Cleveland is right, 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 right up there, but. The Knicks can stay in that mid tier. Yep. They keep playing ball. No, and don't sleep on on um, Brooklyn either. They they got six straight wins, and they they playing tonight. They playing some real good ball. I think they won ten out of their last eleven. So they, you know, they're New York is uh, doing their thing when it comes to ball. We, we uh, definitely um, getting up in the uh, in the Eastern mix. Right. Okay. All right. So you got a. Uh... Jalen Brunson, you got you got Rand uh with Randall. Yeah. And you got, uh, you got Barrett, RJ Barrett's playing. RJ Barrett. Barrett. That's how, that's the name I was looking for. RJ Barrett. Yeah. I, I still don't believe in RJ Barrett though. No. Yep, yeah, that's just it. I didn't either, really. And then I thought, but he's uh if you look at his numbers, he uh he's getting better every year. And they paid him. And uh he, he has he, and that's huh? So he's a solid three. You know, he he he's solid. He's solid, but I mean, he's to me, he's like all Duke players. They're they're going to be solid. You know, yeah. That, we talking about um, R.J. Barrett, West. Um, uh, coach was saying he wasn't a believer. He's still, you know, word is still out on R.J. Barrett. I I think he's a, a solid three. You know, you got you got your Jalen Brunson. You got you. I was not a believer with you, Coach, but he he's finding a way to get buckets. Yeah. I mean, look, once you push him right, though, he got a hard time, boy. Yeah, he a little different when you tell him to go to go go. When you tell him to go, Dominique Wilkins, he's opposite <laughs> Dominique, right? Yeah, he's he's <laughs> South Street Seaport. He's he's all left. So yeah. is Randall too. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. but they they're making it work. But he's getting better, and I think that's the one thing because it's and Brunson's biggest. lefty too, right? Yeah, Brunson's a yep. lefty too. Yeah, they got three lefties. They yeah, three top scores are lefty. Yeah. Crazy, and I, I like okay. Obi Toppin, man. Uh, he's athletic. He plays hard. I like him a lot. Yep, he's developing his outside shot. Yep. You know they all gonna play hard on D too. So it's just a matter of them sustaining. I just, I just hope that they on. can, they can uh, maintain that level of intensity and defense throughout the year, because I, I think Thibodeau pushes his guys so hard. Yeah, you know, come April, May, they start to to break down a little. Hang out. Yeah, but the one thing he he usually, you know, very reluctant to play his young guys. But this team, particularly the young guys, have come up with him these past few years quickly and and topping. Nice. And, and so nice. so he so he's playing like these guys. So they, and you know he still got Rose around. So they got a nice solid rotation where they can you know he because he's gonna burn you out. You know that's yeah. just how Tim does. But with this core. He has a a good number of them he can trust, and you can already see he trusts, you know, Brunson. You know, pops on the staff anyway. So it's just a matter of uh, them keeping that rotation and staying healthy. That's all. Yep, yep. Well, let, let's stay in New York because uh, the Brooklyn Nets are twelve and three since Kyrie's return. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's yeah. right. They five and zero oh since Nike dropped them. That's right. That's right. Wow. He had a meeting um, yesterday with Puma. Leave with um, a black-owned sneaker company. Ooh, wow! You know, so he he's doing his due diligence. I know Puma and New Balance coming after him hard. Would Puma be considered a black-owned sneaker brand? Um, nah, but they they considered a uh, black run because what's my man from um, Rock Nation, Jay Z's boy, um, Dame Dash? Uh, nah, nah, not Dame Dash. Emery, Emery. Emery is in the uh, I think he runs a lifestyle 
marketing for Puma? I thought uh, I thought Jay Z I thought Jay Z bought it or a piece of no it. no he got Emory over there running the lifestyle marketing stuff you know they they're highly involved I'm sure he has a stake I don't know what the monetary stake is in it but they they have another great deal with um, the Black Five organization which is the original um, professional basketball league so they they're doing some good things over there at Puma okay and also New Balance is checking on Kyrie. Yeah, I hope that don't happen. Yeah, yeah why not, Coach? Uh, New Balance is a uh, Go brand huge, huge um, contributor to the uh, to Trump's campaign. You know, they're they're very, I guess, um, I, I would say, uh, right wing leaning. Somebody need to tell New Balance to shut up and just dribble and dribble. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they're gonna be go, coming with deep pockets if they're talking to Kyrie. Yeah, they, I mean, unless listen, they're gonna try to muzzle them, and I, I can't see that happening. So, and, and that's the problem. I mean, New Balance doing some good things, they just started a grassroots um AU circuit, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to kind of go against Nike and Under Armour. So, New, New Balance is um putting all their chips in, and Kyrie would be huge for them. He would be big for them. Yeah, I, I hope he doesn't make that move. I think that, you know, considering what he just came out of and, and what they're politically affiliated with, I don't think it would be a good look. Yeah. But, you know, what What do I know? You know? Yeah. I um, mean, Puma makes the most sense, but. I think so. I yeah. mean, you know, just, and we, don't, we all knew what Puma meant to the culture early on, the hip hop culture. So, it, it would make Make Man, it if I if I can get some Pumas with some strong art support, <laughs> right? There you go, they Kyrie. Nice. They're not there comfortable. Kyrie, Ky the Kyrie. Nice there you go. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was, I was, you know, because Kyrie, he, he had the Hey Rue and the shoe design. Y'all, y'all, y'all see the Hey Rue, right? With the Madison and Bert right there. The Hey Rue. <laughs> like he had the Hey Rue with the Eye of Horace and the, you know, I was, I was feeling it. And he mm -hmm. said the Earth was flat, and I was like. <laughs> Hey, I think he said that after smoking some madism, man. I gotta be honest. Oh, I think oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> <laughs> but um no, so yeah, but Brooklyn's looking really good. They um, are, man. And and look, Ben Ben Simmons still not contributing in a way that to me uh he should be. Mm -hmm. So their upside is is great. They're listening to Jock Vaughn. Yeah, they once they committed to defense and they all started, you know, um, basically just playing their roles. And because uh, Durant and, ball, and Kyrie been balling, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So when when you play like that, and then you know they they playing, they not giving up 120 games because that's the one thing in the beginning of the year they couldn't stop nobody. Nah, they was just letting Joker score out there. Mm, yeah. I thought I think that big game that game that that shifted everything for them was when they won without. Everybody, they sat like seven guys, yeah. you know, and still came away with a win. I think that that said it all right there. That that turned the corner for them. Yeah, yeah. And Milwaukee's still a beast. Yeah, I mean, look, and Middleton's still not a hundred percent. He's just working his way in. Yeah, uh, but they veterans and uh, Lopez, <laughs> Lopez balling, Holiday's balling. Yeah. You know, Lopez is really yeah. balling, man. I think yeah. he's unheralded. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. Yeah, he's a big piece to the puzzle year in and year out, man. He plays yep. his position very well. Yep. You know, gives him a solid low low post presence, defender, and he can step outside and hit, and hit that shot. Yeah, he hit the three, man. You know, he, he's he's really playing well, man. And, and you man. can't discount the fact that they, you know, they – they champions. They got their championship pedigree. That's yep. that same squad, basically. And, and hopefully they'll stay, they stay healthy enough to uh, just keep pace with Boston because I think Boston is uh, going to be problem. front runners all year. I think so. Yeah, and I look, the more I watch Giannis, man, I don't know how he does it, but he's unstoppable, man. You can't stop them from getting to the rim. No. Mm -hmm. All you can hope to do is outpace them. Yes. Uh, Outscore him. Yep. You're not gonna stop him. Nope. Nope. Mm. You know. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, who else we got out east that's, that's worth talking about? Well, Cleveland. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That, that, that backcourt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who was I talking to uh, this week? And they, they said, uh, made me aware of some comments Donovan Mitchell made about, you know, just seeing other than Snow White in the Seven Dwarfs oh. makes him feel more comfortable. Y'all know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> Dude, you know. Snow White used to make me feel more comfortable too. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, well, we know you, Clay. We, I, we, you know, yeah. I mean, but now he's saying that not being surrounded in the midst of oh you know, nah. you know you know hey going to cleveland's a little bit more urban so to speak you know? yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. He feels, yeah he feels, I think he feels more at home when he's yeah. playing they might not he he might qualify as it's kind of like in portland right they have a very small contingent yeah <laughs> and and did y'all see the comment that dane made about um, when you talk about shooters, he said, you know, Steph Curry, of course, is the best, but he needs to be in that conversation that he's not mentioned enough. I agree. 100%. I agree, too. Yeah, you can. yeah, I agree. But, you know, when you're not winning playoff games, series, excuse me, you're not winning playoff series. Yeah. Yes, he's, he's right. Yeah, yeah but he's, he's, he's won a couple. Unlike – no one else in the league, to be honest with you. What he's won two series. Yeah, he's been in the league how, how many years? Well, I'm just well, I'm just saying, like he's won. <laughs> so Dame yeah. is, you know, he he has he's done the most with what he's been given. And mm-hmm. like last year, they took everything away from him, mm-hmm. and he's competing this year because I don't think many people expected much from them this year, and they're right up there, they're right in the mix. And like, you're right, right, Cliff. He he. He has won series. That's what I'm saying. Like, like legitimately, no, I think. No. <laughs> yeah, like who else is who? Who's hit game winning series in the league right now? Dame did it twice, and yeah. you know, and it's you know, <laughs> so he's legit when he gets there, and 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 all the time he's carrying them cats. So he just he's got cool. the same. Dame has got the same mo as, and they don't give it to him. The same mo as Durant, LeBron, all the all the stars. They complain about not having nobody. We all give him that narrative, and Dame is in that same camp. But he tried to make it. He tried to make the best of it. That's right. it, to his to his fault because he's not gonna win there. But I give him credit for just hanging in there. That's yeah. it, you know. But right. they all they, they nobody can win by themselves. But that don't take away his greatness. No, not not at all. But you know, when when you start to we start to compare players, you, you do this often. You start to sp- split the hairs, and you go you get later. You know, championship. You know, conference championships. Like you start to talk more about those cats and what they bring to the table, and like even like you know the jury's out on on uh, and he ain't been in the league as long as uh, Dame, but Luca. Like you know, we love the regular season numbers. We love the, but you know, until you get to at least to the to the chip, like you kind of get left out of the conversation. Doesn't mean you're not great, but when you're talking about Steph and KD and you know the chip is on a resume. So well, Luke was progressing. Like he's progressing nicely. He's 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 young and remember they did he they went to the Western Conference Finals last year. So yeah, yeah. Luke, Luke he's a step away. He's a step away, and and that was a year early. Mm-hmm. And um, but he may not have enough help either. Although they have a decent squad, but do they really? You know. Well, listen. Let's pause this conversation. Our guest just hopped in the green room. So we're going to bring her in and get the going. What's going on with the queen, Tamika Dixon, two time WNBA champion, looking at championship pedigree, talking about championships, ladies and gentlemen. Tamika Dixon's in the building. Round of applause, everybody. Round of applause. Yes, 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 yes. What's Hallelujah. going on, guys? How you guys doing? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good, yeah. good. Thank no, you for we, having me. Oh man, it's our <laughs> honor and, and, and pleasure no to have doubt. you in here. You know, you know, we've been talking about the WNBA a lot lately. Um, awesome. You know, oh yeah, definitely. Um, but I, I to be and honest, Tamika, before he continues, <laughs> I'm pro WNBA. Hawk is is anti 
Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not. He, I am he, not. He is wholeheartedly anti WNBA. We don't want y'all to get paid at all. Nah, <laughs> stop. Don't get, uh-huh. don't get, so don't get hot on my bad nah, side. Nah, nah, <laughs> but before we get into that, though, let me first thank you, Miss Dixon. You're welcome. For participating in 24 Hours of Peace this past year. She was a part of our town hall assembly, Mama, I Made It, and it was a phenomenal conversation, and she added so much to it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It was very important. You're very welcome. Be do for this. God. Very welcome. It was my pleasure to be yeah. there. Yeah, we just had to Great soften event. up the blows. There, you coach and, and, and also the thank you. Get on the good side. <laughs> and and, and so, thank you for taking my child's calls. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, you know, we've been having this conversation on social media, especially with you know our, our sister Brittany Griner being held captive over in Russia um, as a political prisoner. You know, right. the conversation about the pay scale was ongoing on social media. Right. And, um, you know, just it, the clarity around, you know, the WNBA, how it gets paid for. Um, like, we, we need more understanding. And, you know, what better than a person who's actually been successful in this league? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the viability of the WNBA. So um, I think it's in a great position right now. Um I think that the work that is that's been done this up to this point um, with the recent collective bargaining agreement, I think they just signed a new collective bargaining agreement. Um, I think it's a year, maybe two. It'll be two years in place um, with the pay increase in that. Um, But but even beyond that, I think um, I think it's uh, viewership is up. Um, Tickets, ticket sales across the league up. just notoriety of the athletes up um so every everything is ticking the right way ticking towards the right way um i think a, what a lot of people don't really talk about is um just the investment in women's sports from the ownership perspective i think when i was involved in the league and you know when it was just you know getting off the ground um you had owners the owners that were a part of it were um not the not the i mean i wouldn't say all of them but but most of them were involved just because they had nba teams so you know david stern wanted to make a huge push towards women's sports and he brought it to all the you know all the organizations all the franchises and said this is what i want to do you know i want the WNBA here you know i want to put up a major push behind it so i think he kind of you know pushed some of the some of the owners into having a WNBA team um good and bad um because they may not have that same vision and passion for the women's side of the game and as you see over the years a lot of the you know the the franchise organizations or the organizations that were kind of like the the mainstays uh switch ownership groups Um, some of it was because they didn't want a WNBA team or they wanted to focus more on the NBA side or whatever. Um, but a lot of it is, you know, they didn't really have a real investment in women's sports. Um, so the, the shift was now, you know, you got investors or ownership groups that are really invested into the sport. Like they wouldn't have purchased the team if they didn't think that they can take it and grow it. Um, So now you have that, you know, the foundation is set. Um, So I think from a, from the perspective of where it's going, I think it's in a great place. Um, You know, they just signed a a pretty decent uh, TV, TV deal with ESPN. Mm -hmm. Um, So you have that. So I think everything, when you look at it, um, I think people are really saying, now you know we have a, a viable option um in women's sports and i think you know they're they're standing behind and grow, and getting behind it and really want to see it grow and and i think you know i think in the next five to seven years you're going to see a major shift nice uh fellas you, you, you questions because I, I got mine well the, <laughs> the women's uh ncaa just signed a um abc deal for the national championship deal uh, for the this year, 
And again, that that effort and that push for um, uh, more notoriety started with the uh, the uh, women's game in, in college and uh, definitely is spilling over into WNBA. And I think uh, it's only going to grow. Right. You know, see deal. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, absolutely. And I think social media really changed it. I mean, it just changes the game. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it changes the game because now these women are brands within themselves um, mm -hmm. and can take and grow it, you know, grow just whatever they do within their brand. Um, anything they do, they're growing the sport, um, you know, which we didn't have, you know, when when I was a part of the WNBA, social media was wasn't a thing then. No. Um, but now you just, I mean, there's just so many different avenues that you can take. And if you're creative and strategic with it, you can really grow the brand. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think it's going in a, in a heck of a position. It's, it's, I think it's going to take off. I think seven, I would say five to 10 years, you're going to see a major shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple, um, a friend of mine, his daughters, um, I'm sure you've heard of them because they're here in Jersey, um, twin backcourt, DJ Paul, those dirt girls, you know. Yeah. They I have do a lot NIL, of stuff with them. They have an NIL deal already with Puma. Mm -hmm. um, and they're only sophomores in high school. Right. And, you know, that to me is huge because I don't know any any sophomore boys who have an NIL deal. Right. Um, you know, so I think that's definitely uh, we're pointing in the right direction. And um, I'm a basketball purist. And I always said the girls game, the women's game is a better pure basketball game. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have necessarily the athleticism, the dunks and all that stuff. But right. from a pure basketball technical standpoint, it's a much better game to watch. Right. You know? um, right. So I'm looking forward to the game growing. Um, you know, you got people like Hawk who just want to see dunks and all these yeah. fancy moves. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to start seeing that a lot more, Hawk. Yeah, yeah. You I gonna promise start you. You're going to start seeing it a lot more. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm a purist, too. And I don't know if it's just because I, you know, I'm, I'm a woman and I, I've played the sport for, for many years. Um, but I just think it's, you know, it's a brand of basketball that's if you if you are a strategy type of person or you just like to see, you know, good gameplay, it's the perfect place to be. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, when I think about just getting fans in the seats, you know, I always say to myself, like, if you just come to one WNBA game, I think you'll, you know, you'll, you'll appreciate it and come back. Yeah. Um, so it's just giving it, giving it that one shot. And I think, you know, you'll see some things that might be exciting to you or, or it might not be something for you, but I think we'll get more than more yeses than we do knows if you just walk into the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, when, when I'm seeing the conversation happen on social media about, you know, the pay scale and how they should pay women the same amount. And so now, well, who's they? Like, who is they? It, like, you got the NBA, the WNBA. I heard you mention David Stern earlier was a big proponent of having – does the NBA own the WNBA? Is it two separate leagues? I know you mentioned that, you know, the, initially the owners of the NBA kind of fit, but now these other groups. Can you just go a little bit more about – what the NBA is as its, its own entity? Mm -hmm. So it is its own entity now, but in the beginning it wasn't. Um, you know, it was owned by the NBA, and D David had a vested interest in seeing it grow and develop. Um, that's how it came to pass. However, you know, now you have owners that are involved. You have independent owners. So you may have, like when I – when I was with the Sparks, you know, the Sparks was owned by the bus family. Well, the bus sold, the buses sold um, the Sparks to another investment group who um, has uh, their owner, their Dodger owners, um, that ownership group. Um, but it's, they, they wanted it because they saw something in it that they felt that they can grow it. So this is, this is where you want you want it to be you want owners who really have a vested interest in now, the, the owners own individual teams yes but then you have the WNBA as a league right is owned by that that's separate right or they're it's, collectively it's they own it i don't it's the nba still has its uh still has a foothold on the on the right. um right right you know on the WNBA on the product itself 
Um, however, the franchises are individually owned. Right. And you um, are so lucky with the, the reason why I'm driving that question home is because mm -hmm. of the investment, right? Right. Where does the investment come from? And most people don't understand. Like I didn't, I didn't know. I thought like much like the NFL, like there's the NFL and then there's like all these other teams. So, and then you, so there's, there's these teams that right. the NFL as a brand, as its own entity. It is. Is it the teams themselves? It's the it's it's a it's it's kind of a combination of both mm -hmm. because you have your individual owners. So you're gonna have, say, from a branding perspective. So the NBA has its own groups of like Adidas, like Nike, like you know all of these brands that are NBA owned. You know they have deals with the NBA per se, mm -hmm. but then the individual teams may have a different deal with those same brands or yeah. different brands and it's you know the way it's structured is a little a little crazy and it could go we can go down that rabbit hole but it's it's a combination of both so there is there, there's money there it is money, money there yeah and i and um the sparks i think you were lucky because we see the bus are doing a terrible job right now with the lakers <laughs> Yeah. And Magic is definitely uh, a better owner with the Dodger group right. um, winning championships. Um, well, he got a little bit more say-so on that side. I yeah, think, and that, 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 that has helped tremendously. <laughs> um, I wish yeah. he was back with the Lakers. I'm sorry he left. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. I, I, I got to I mean, the buses were great to me. The the bus family was great to me, so I can't, you know, but <laughs> but I, I understand what you're saying, brother. You see how coach does, though. You see how coach has set you up to get the bus run over you. you be careful with that guy. <laughs> I get what you're saying, coach. I'm, I'm a Lakers fan, and I'm I'm heartbroken by what they what's going on right now. So yeah, they they, they uh uh we yeah we can definitely have that conversation, but it's not going in the right direction. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all that history and all those championships and all of that. And you know, this is what the product we putting on the floor. Uh, we gotta make gotta make some tough decisions. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and and the money thing is always this is where me and Hawk differ. Um, not that not that women should get paid the same, but it should be equitable and <laughs> based on the percentage of money that the WNBA has to what the NBA um, has, you right. know, it should be equitable. And that's where I don't think it is. Right. I mean, you can, we can, ha we can definitely have that conversation, but and we I don't like to tell we don't differ on that. Stop that. <laughs> that. So what was I saying? We don't, we don't differ on that. She just added a lot of clarity in terms of who owns the WNBA and who's responsible for that investment. Because when you hear every, Every year, the NBA subsidizes the WNBA ten to twelve million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. To me, that rings. WNBA is its own thing, and the NBA is, you know, as charity investing into this other thing just to see it go, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not at all what what this is. No, the it's not. The NBA has a vested interest in the WNBA, right? That that that's a different that's a different story now. When you right, and if you if the you, billions of dollars the NBA is making, yeah, and if you look and. Like I like to give people this comparison because I I'm not the type of person to say like, you know, the NBA players are making millions. We need to make millions. So you know, I I come from that era. You know, Michael Cooper was my coach, so I used to have a lot of conversations with him um, about the Lakers in the '80s and what that plight was. And you know, he used to tell me like he told me, you know, in the '80s they were still flying commercial. Mm -hmm. So. You know, the NBA was and it had been in existence. So you think NBA year 20, you thinking they still flying commercial like it's a process. You know what I'm saying? It's a process to get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, but I think where we are, um, you think year. I, I don't even know what year we are. You talking about 27 yeah. years in 97 20. was the inaugural, the inaugural yeah. year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, somewhere in there. Um, <clears throat> we're we're right on i mean we're now we're starting to have the conversation about charter flights so when you think about you know when you compare it side by side you you're starting to see you know some of those comparisons ring true now now you can have the conversation you know now you're gonna start to get some of these things happening 
uh, because now they see it at 27 years, you know, 20 years, and they, they said, okay, this is something, you know, people didn't know whether it was going to last that long, and here we are. So it's viable now. So now what's the buy-in? Nice. nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, I want to switch gears, if you mm-hmm. don't mind. Fellas, if you want to hop in and ask a question before I do, please do, because I'm about to switch up over here. Because, you know, when the sister Brittany got caught up, it was, you know, why she got to go overseas? She shouldn't even have to go overseas. True. You know, Listen, um, go ahead. I'm going. Uh, so, you know, just to give you guys a little bit of a backstory on that, the, the club that Brittany was playing for was mm. the club that I played for over in Russia when I was over there. So I got a little bit of a backstory, and it was the hottest. We were the first group of Americans that went over that that was getting those major, major contracts like that. Um, and you w- couldn't tell me I wasn't, I, I was going to Russia. You, you wouldn't be able to tell me that, but when the money, when they show you what type of money you can make over there, it just, it just made sense. <laughs> it, it made sense, you know, to, 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 to look at that. Um, the, the lifestyle over there, actually for us was great we were charter we were private jets we were living in moscow in the best flats that they had that they offered that we were getting the higher six-figure payouts um and we were the first group that was doing that so you think britney you know she's she's getting a little over a millionaire there for six months of play um just made sense you know it made sense i mean you know political pawn basically yeah, sure, just got caught sure. up for sure, but for sure. when you talk about you know what we what we do i mean we play six months out of the year in the wnba so what are you going to do the other six months mm-hmm. you could either stay you could stay at home mm-hmm. but you know a lot of us want to continue to play and play at an elite level so that we don't lose anything mm-hmm. so that's that's the other part of it you know the conditioning and just you know staying on that same regimen right. year round um, which is different from the NBA because, you know, they play an 82-game season plus playoffs. We play a 30-game season plus playoffs. So it's, it's mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a lot different. So you have to really look at that option. Um, now, when you talk about the money, it's a, it's a, it's a valid argument, but I don't think, you know, she could – I mean, you. What do you? What are you trying to pay her for six months of play? It's not an eighty-two game season. Uh, she's getting high six-figure payments in the W in the WNBA, which I think is fair. You know, that is not even talking about her endorsement deals or whatever other deals that she has on the table from other entities, her Nike deal or whatever. Um, so she, you know, she's one of those that garners that type of you know, that star power. Um, so, I mean, it's a conversation, but I don't yeah, think, I, mean, I, I don't think we're at the point where we, where, where we make that, that, you know, I think it's equitable right now where we are. Really? Um, wow. And, and it, and it's going to get better, you know, right. now to, to make it, notwithstanding the, the, you know, the money and all that, one of the things we, we talked about, I think it was last week was, um, agents or handlers of players in foreign mm-hmm. countries, right? Don't you think they have a responsibility so she doesn't even get in that position that she was in at the airport? Because yeah. um, we we know we know NBA players have guys um, who travel with them or you know who make sure you know they they do the right thing. Um, right. You don't get put in certain situations. Do y'all have that same situation? Um, and should you should should some onus be put on whoever her agents are, management are, where you know they they could take that? And yeah, comes down to it. Yeah, I mean we do. You you have an international agent. You have that person that broke with the deal for your international play, and they may have worked in tandem with your American agent. So they worked in tandem to get you a, that deal overseas. So you have somebody that's kind of boots on the ground over there that 
might have, you know, been able to facilitate some stuff over there for you. However, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the week of, I think the WNBA issued a statement saying, like, don't go. Okay. Like these are the these are the countries to stay out of, and if I'm Brittany and I'm looking at the state of what's going on, and I sign my contract, I don't care how much money they they offering me, I'm gonna chill out and wait and see. I'm gonna let the dust settle before I go. I mean, yeah, you know, it's yeah. like they. I mean, did it? Is it just a timing thing? Where I mean, but I know you know the WNBA usually is like because China and Russia was on that list. Like you yeah. know, if you got deals out there, you know, yeah. don't go. Like you yeah. know, okay. I mean, it's just no. if you if, you know if you're just a, a student of politics and you know the political environment at that particular time, it got it got serious real quick, real yeah. quick, and you, like real yeah. quick. I think you know? that week is when, and I you know I don't know where it fell as far as you know when she yeah. went over and when she got on a plane but i know that week was the week that they kind of issued like a, a statement to all the players it was like e like an email blast that went out to all the players like listen you know if you're going overseas please be mindful of these two countries like you got deals over there mm -hmm. you know it's political unrest it's about mm -hmm. you know war on the horizon or whatever stay you know stay away yeah. so mm -hmm. You know, how much of that is Britney's fault? You know, how much of it lies on anybody else? Gotcha. That's, you know, and so there yeah. we are. <laughs> uh, just real quick, you haven't been in Russia before, you know, for folks who haven't, and not many people get to go to Russia. Yeah. Just what's the culture like? I know it's different for you because you're a star, you're a celebrity, you know, basketball player, different, you know, but as much as you can describe the general sentiment around hip hop, our people, you know. They love us. They love us. They love our culture. The clubs were always popping when we went out, you know, and it was hip hop. It was straight, you know, they, they listened to a lot of what we listened to. Um, I was, you know, I was fortunate to be able to play in Moscow. So, you know, we had access to, you know, a lot, a lot of things as, as opposed to being in one of those like smaller, like, you know, towns or whatever in Russia that didn't really have access to, you know, nightlife and things like that. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, who we were and, you know, they embraced us, you know, they loved us, they, you know, showed us love at the games. And, you know, we were, you know, when we went out, you know, uh, did some nightlife in Moscow, it was nice. You know, I, I had no complaints. Fellas, any questions? Yeah, I do. I have a question. I, I can imagine that. I can I can only uh, envision Russia being like the Czech Republic where I've been, but like Russia being like a little bit more rigid. But going back to your question, I have like a thought now. The WNBA players got that notice and Brittany went. Now, if she didn't go, but she signed a contract, could she have been liable for not going and uh, held accountable in Russia when the dust settles? Like, is that like a jailable offense or would she just have lost money if that was the case? She might have lost money, but I think it kind of, you know, and I'm just speculating now. Mm -hmm. Um you know, it would have been a conversation that she could have had with her international agent. Mm -hmm. And like, listen, you know, a lot of times when there's, you know, they don't want you to go over into a situation either that may not be safe. Um, so I'm sure, and Brittany had a good relationship with the team. Mm -hmm. I'm sure like it could have been some type of deal worked out where, you know, I mean, they all, everybody knows what's going on over there mm -hmm. um, to where, you know, they could have probably worked something out. I don't know if it would have been a little bit of a loss of money or if she got some some money in advance, you know, before she even stepped foot on a plane. You mm -hmm. know, they would probably have to talk out the logistics as far as that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure they would have been able to work it out because they don't want, you know, 
once we get over there, they're also responsible for us. Right. right. So, you know, they didn't they don't want that smoke either. Mm -hmm. So I think they probably could have worked something out. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Mm. And that's just me speculating, but you know. So what's up with you right now? What, what do you got going on? <laughs> you know, I, I I've seen growth, I've seen some announcements on social media. Phyllis yeah. Simmons Dixon, what's what you got going on? Um, so right now I just took a director of basketball position at a sports academy. Nice. Um, yes, Peak Sports Academy in, in uh Mountainside. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I know the owner there. Yep. Yeah. So I've been I'm three months in, you know, so I'm learning the ropes there and trying to figure some things out. Um, but it's it's a passion project for me. Um because it gives me a, an opportunity to get back into the game. Um, I was a business owner, you know, so I was, I was away from the game for 10, 11 years. And now I get a chance to kind of get back into something I'm really, really passionate about and really love, which is, you know, basketball and then giving back. So it's, uh, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and once again, thank you for participating in 24 hours of peace. That was super, super fresh. Oh, yes, it was. I had a good time. I actually, after the town hall, I actually stayed and hung out all nice, three, nice. Three I was for a few got hours, on so. Friday because Friday, you know, we go from six on Friday to six on Saturday, and Friday I, was lit. Oh my I god, heard, I heard, I heard, I heard all about it. I was like, I missed all that. It was crazy, <laughs> it was crazy. DJ Quad from 12 to 4 playing house. He bought out Melba Moore. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. oh, Moore my goodness. Out there at two in the morning. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> yes. So once again, Tamika, thank you for participating on Matters in Sports. Of you know, course. Great. Thank you guys yeah, for having me. It's always a thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, Tamika. You, you cleared a lot of the smoke away. We appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Yeah, now we can talk more intelligently about the WNBA. Yeah. And now we can get we can get Hakeem to go to a game and, and support the game. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, we're we, we gonna go and we're gonna sit courtside and have a good time. Come Hi. on, let's go. I got there you. you go. Go. <laughs> Peace, Queen. Uh, peace, y'all. Take care. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. Bye to you me. too. Bye bye. Nice. That was dope. Hey, Georgetown is playing UConn tough right now. Yeah, I know JT had put up a score earlier. UConn yeah, George, was Georgetown is up five on him right now. Wow. Oh, wow. Down seven when he posted the score. Yeah. Pat, Pat got them boys playing. Well, you know, they just lost their assistant coach, Lewis Orr, former Seton Hall. Yeah, head. rest in peace, Lewis Orr, former Nick. Um, a former, a former Nick and a former Syracuse great man. Mm -hmm. Yo, I remember Cliff the watching the Knicks. It was me, you, and Hassan watching the Knicks at Hassan's house, and Lewis Orr was doing his thizzle. <laughs> he was doing. I his thing. remember that too. Yeah, at Hassan's house. <laughs> at Hassan's house, we was mm -hmm. playing Nerf basketball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all jokers. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is oh funny. man. So uh yeah, so we, we we talked about the East Coast with the NBA. Let's hop out west. We'll avoid the Lakers. What's up with them? Let's talk about the Pelicans, the real Lakers. Stop. <laughs> yeah, but they are on a little losing streak right now, no. I mean, they yeah. still don't have Ingram back yet, but uh, yeah, they still don't have Ingram. They don't know a little, a little losing streak. Yeah, Zion is another one of them dudes that is I think virtually unstoppable. Yeah, he just got to he has to stay healthy because every time he goes up, you just don't yeah. know how he's coming down. That big old body. Yep. We're gonna call. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're not gonna call Zion street clothes. We're gonna call Zion fast food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he got that under control. Like, he got, right now, he looks like he really wants this. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, does. he does. He does. Yeah, he don't. Yeah. He, don't he doesn't look like AD. Now he he look like right. he look like he ready. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So I'm yeah. you know, excited about the the Pelicans. Do you see the meme I, I sent you guys? Zion and Luca. Yeah. In a custody battle. Over the Suns. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even though Booker had what 55 the other day, 58. Right? 58. I'm That's why we try to tell all y'all Jordan Poole people last year slow down, easy sluggers. Well, Jordan had 40 last night, yeah, but 
he Jordan had 40, but when, how long did it take him to do that this year? Like, we got to get – we got. one thing I've noticed about sports lately that I'm getting kind of like – kind of like irritated by is the microwave, man. Cats do something one time, and they they – the best and you we forget about cats who did it day in and day out every day grinding it out every day 25 10 12 whatever it is and one dude he'll get his bag of 130 million and then we can't find him for like 17 18 games and he scored 40 we're like oh yo we go well, jordan pulls out of me kind of might joe go step in your grill you might not be a minute for you to oh, we, 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 he got to be on he got to be on notice right now i mean he got his back and he needs to step up consistently like yeah this is his real first sighting of the year yeah, you know what i'm saying, what I'm saying. It was his first real sighting all two, year. a month and some change in, but and he needs to step up because they need to win they got the next tonight let's see what they can do well i mean he he spoke yeah. to that he said last year he was coming off the bench or even when he did start they were just playing him as another guy. This year, when he's in the game, he's getting the Steph attention. So mm -hmm. they're guarding him differently. They know who he is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where the difference happens. When you start, you know, playing like he did last year, now they you in scouting report. Yeah, he you're not a surprise no more. A lot last year. Mm -hmm. And again, when you compare him to a guy like Devin Booker, who had been doing it for years at a time. Uh, who compared to Devin that's Booker? My, that's, that's my point. That's my point. That's my point right there. With Devin Booker. Oh, people comparing him to Devin Booker was like Jordan Poole and Devin Booker. That was like a conversation. Oh, I, I know yeah. about that. Yeah. I, I yeah, so jo that. Jordan Poole is now seeing that it's it's a little tougher to be When you're prepared. To when people prepare for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, when wait, you wait. scout and report. And, mm -hmm. you, and, 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 and when, when things are clicking with everybody else around you, it makes it easier for you to be that person when things yeah. are clicking for nobody else either when nobody's playing up to par because you know when it's not just Golden, I mean uh, it's not just Jordan Poole on Golden State that was playing not up to par so all the pieces ain't working and you know you're looking for like who's going who's that standout person and yeah it wasn't him not yeah. not yet and I'm not listen yeah. again he no, can still yet. do all those great things yeah but it's just the fact that we we just quickly. Anoint cats fast, and it's like, yo, let's just let them do it for a second. That's it. This will be a winning team, too, because Devin Booker could put up these numbers. Another, another case if they don't get to the chip or win a chip, but they got to the chip, they didn't well, win. He put up 73 when he wasn't on a good team, and people remember that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and Devin, <laughs> Booker, Devin Booker's <laughs> issue now, number. Devin Booker, no matter what he does, it's not gonna matter until he wins a chip. Now. Yeah, yeah. And that, oh, he's done everything but. He's yeah, done but everything me, but. That's, that, that's, that's the wrong way to look at it because, you know, he's consistently played at a high level. And you can't say now, oh, well, you just got to win a chip now. That may come. He well, has a lot of times Booker, ten times Booker disappears and doesn't step up. He'll have, a, he'll have, he'll have some, 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 some clunkers. He's, in the he's pretty consistent like with scoring the ball. You know, huh? he's pretty consistent with scoring the ball. You know, yeah, yeah everybody has a bad game. Everybody has bad games. Him, I've seen him people struggle. don't have bad. Yeah, everybody has months. a bad game. You know, you know out of eighty-two games, you gonna you gonna have you gonna have a few bad games. You know, but and I it was mean, you know and it was bad. the close and it was the closeout game that he struggled in. So I mean, we can't we can't uh, you know forget about that either. You know what I'm saying? But you know, he'll have his chances. It's just a matter of because. Uh, He's done everything else. And, and I think the key with, the key with Devin is that that was part of the process, too, of, yeah. of struggling in a closeout game. I think that's part of the process mm -hmm. of getting like, to the next level. Jordan Poole is brand spanking new, right? You know, he, what he yep. did was, you yep. know, oh, my God. Oh, incredible. Right, incredible, right? And, and it led to is a very important part of winning a championship. He was. You can't take that away from him. No. Mm -hmm. Let, let's see you do it again. Let's see you do it again. But, you know. No, let's see you do it again without Steph. Let's and with being on everybody on the radar, you know, being schemed for, being, you know, being scouted, you know, oh, for, sure. for, you know, all that. You know, and he has to. Steph is gonna be out of a month and or two or whatever. They have to at least tread water because yeah. if they fall too low in the West, they're gonna be done. Yep. I mean, it's just a, it's sort of everybody like would, every, everybody needs to step up. Like everybody needs to step up. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, Jordan Poole got to go without Steph. Steph. It's, it's easy. Steph it's, easy. They were like, it's really easy to score when Steph is on the floor. Yeah. It's extremely easy because the whole defense is looking at him. And they're, they they got to know where he is. You know, so it's it's easy. Poole got to step up now because he's in that role. But he's yep. not the only person that has to step up. Oh no, Clay got to oh, step up. Clay got to step he up. He got to be more consistent because he he got to need that uh that outside threat. And uh, I don't know what's going on with um, Wiseman, but is he back up from the G League yet? He's uh, he's back. He's back. They're talking about trading him now. Really? Yeah, they're talking about trading him. Um, last I saw was to Charlotte actually to team him up with Lamelo. They said Lamelo needs a, a big. So who, who are they trying to get for him? That they didn't say, which I thought was, you know, a little odd too. Um, but I guess there are conversations between Charlotte and uh, Golden State. Mm. So yeah. you know, the young boys have not stepped up for Golden State as of yet. Nah, Moody, Kaminga, Wiseman, none of them. Yeah, they and they have a lot of promise. Yeah, you um, get that. You get that ring. You, you like. Yeah, you right. get that ring early on. That's right. All right, I can chill. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, we did. Oh, we did already. All right. Yep. Yeah, Been here, done that. Yeah, it'll click. Nah, you gotta. And, trying and to the, get money the, now. The, the, to punch, the punch has an effect on them too. When mm -hmm. you see a teammate get knocked out, it has an effect on you. Oh yeah, it do. Mm -hmm. You know, as a young player, because you're not you're not going to be as vocal. You're not going to be as confident. You ain't trying to get knocked out. Exactly. <laughs> right. And exactly. I don't care. Nobody <laughs> say nobody likes a bully. <laughs> nobody likes a bully, yo. Mm -hmm. It's just to be good for the moment. But then you start looking at this nigga. Nah, nigga, you ain't going to punch me. What? Like You, you got to set boundaries. Oh, he just yeah. showed us. He'll punch a motherfucker. Yeah, so I mean that has to play me, on <laughs> on those young boy psyche, you know. I'm sure Kaminga ain't never seen nothing like that in his life, you know. So mm -hmm. just because his uh, his background, you know, I'm sure he ain't seen nothing like that. So <laughs> nah, yeah. but we're not gonna blame this all on the punch though. He just gotta step up. Yeah, you know I mean <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna make excuses. Yeah. Well, yeah. they can't win on the road. I mean, they're three and fourteen on the road, so I mean the yeah. first thing, and 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 that to that point, you have to look at the uh, how close is the team. It seems like the team is splintered, and they've they've even said it. Like uh, the early part of the year, and Draymond even said it that you know he had to win a lot of the cats' respect back, and you know he had to ease back into relationships and and not be uh, you know as 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 forceful and as aggressive and as opinionated because. You know, you you, you just you got to win. You know, line has been set. Yeah, you will punch a person in their face. So if there's any tension at all, <laughs> I'll punch you in your face. <laughs> Why? Because mm -hmm. y'all know what you're gonna do. Yeah, that, I mean, it's tough to play with a guy like that who you concerned with might just punch you in the face. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so, in front yeah. of the world. Yeah, that, that there, of course, there's tension. That tension is going to be there until he leaves. Really? Well, that, that speaks directly to why they have an awful road record, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but this, we'll, we'll see how the team responds with Steph being out because hopefully it's a blessing in disguise. They come together and they can tread water because, uh, you know, it's a good team. Yeah. Now th this is the time for them to come together. To mm -hmm. build that camaraderie without Steph being there. Yep. Yeah. We'll see. It but you know, the, the other team that looks real good is um, you know, Memphis. John Morant is still John mm -hmm. Morant. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. You know, um, he got kicked out of game the other night though, which was I thought was interesting. He did something that you never do, um, and basically questioned a ref about his integrity. You know, so he got teed up and thrown out the game. You, you can't do that. Um, cause I don't think he's recognized that the, just like the players are a brotherhood, the officials are a brotherhood. Preach coach, preach. You know, <laughs> and, hey, we, we've seen, we've seen how, you know, officials talk, but we've mm -hmm. also seen that Ja gets some great calls. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets, he gets superstar calls 
maybe a little too early in his career. And I think that might go away now. That may yeah, what, is, what, what happened uh, they talk. With, that, with that call? What, what, uh, why did he get thrown out? I didn't. I didn't see the. I didn't see the um, call. I just saw the clip of him talking to the ref. I don't even know what he said, but they said he questioned the ref's integrity, and I was like, "Okay, I, I don't know what you could say to to. Well, I know what you could say to an official, but <laughs> mm -hmm. you know why he went there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah." Yeah, I am not sure what happened. It's a it's it's just the easy I mean listen, doing that doing that being on that side of it for twenty years and I just actually went to a eighth grade game last week and I don't haven't been I haven't seen any basketball since COVID, right? Like youth basketball. So I went out and I'm watching the officials do this game for a friend of mine's kid and you know, I come in the gym and a parent is undressing the referee, you know, in his face and I said, I hope that's not my man. And Lloyd, he was my man. He was, he was oh. you know. So when I when I walk over to him, just trying to say, I was like, you know, yeah. I, I told him I was like, not that I'm, I feel like you. I'm a like I'm a professional, um, but at the end of the day, I was like, to my watching the game, the team didn't play well. Mm -hmm. They just didn't play well, and the other team wanted it more. And he kept saying, "Oh, why is this guy always on the free throw line?" Because he's more aggressive than anybody on the court. He keeps mm -hmm. getting fouled because he's going after every rebound. He's going to the basket hard. He's not taking a weak shots. He's not mm -hmm. flailing. He's he's balanced. That that's why. That's why. But I didn't want to get in get into explaining because the it's in vogue to yell it to blame somebody for why your kid is not playing well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's part of it, right? And and our culture, I think, has gotten out of hand with one parents um, how to yell at. Um, officials and coaches, and now coaches, especially youth coaches, being more concerned with the officials than they are coaching their team. Yep. And so the kids are picking up on this. So yeah, they're coaches, that they're spilled right out to the court. Yes. It's that yes. lack of respect for the officials um, during the game, and it's becoming a problem. And guys we see, as, they, as we see these younger guys come into the league, you're going to see less and less respect yeah. for officials. You remember, you remember Julius Hodge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Julius Hodge uh, was his uncle was in the stands at a game, and they were playing. St. Raymond's was playing. Um, I forgot who they played for the city championship. And uh, the semifinal game, the referee was in the stands watching, and he was talking, but he was talking near Julius Hodge's uncle, who was in the stands. He didn't know who he was, but he was saying some things about Julius. And the next game, obviously, that ref had that game. He had that championship. And the game, uh, game came down to the last minute. Foul was called, long but short. Hodges' team lost. Uncle popped out the stands and knocked out somebody's fronts. Oh my! <laughs> so I just gave you. I didn't. You know, so yeah, that was a long of a short, but you know, the bottom line is even as of, like with with officials, even with we never I don't talk about nothing like you know, it was you know, you see kids playing, you don't say anything about a child because or a kid because you don't know who's in the stands looking. That could be that kid's parent, uncle, niece, nephew, brother, mm -hmm. father, whatever it is. Yep. You just don't know. So that was that's that's on the flip side of it, you you know. The, the parents are acting derogatory towards the officials, but officials have to watch what they say, too, at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Now everything is under a microscope. I mean, the officials, how often now are the, are the officials more the uh, uh, part of the game than the actual game? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about on all levels. And because of this instant replay, everything being scrutinized. So when something's missed, it's like, it's a travesty. And you know, like the two plays in football this week. You know, where yeah, he was on yeah, the line. The Giants should have lost. Yeah. I mean, they 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 completely hose the Redskins. I mean, uh, the, the commanders on two plays back to back. I mean, to blatant. end that game. Blatant. Blatant. That yeah. pass interference call, he basically was he holding the man. Yo. He was hugging him yeah. the whole time. <laughs> it yeah. was crazy, yo. 
But I, I think that was, I would think that also um, goes to them just wanting to make sure that Dallas uh, got his playoffs. So, you know, that <laughs> had to do with it. Well, the Giants I wouldn't be are, surprised, Coach. <laughs> well, listen, the, Gi- the Giants are a bigger market team. Put them in, too. The Cowboys no, and the Giants in. I and think then, coach coach is missing the fact that it was the commanders that's trying to see that Daniel Schneider doesn't get in the playoffs. Yeah. Not the Cowboys get in. Hey, hey. Daniel Schneider doesn't Touché. get in. Touche. Touche. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. They want him out of the league. They want yes, him out of football. Yes, sir. So, you know, they're doing everything they can to get rid of this bad seed. Cause I'm so I got a sneaky suspicion Daniel Schneider was the one who popped that picture of Jerry Jones up. His oh. <laughs> You may be right about that. Ooh, you wanted something, Wes. You may, you may be right about that. You yes. wanted something, Wes. <laughs> yeah, I think they want him out quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, 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 didn't, I didn't, I forgot about that angle. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Yeah, I, I think you definitely wanted something there because I've never seen, I've seen officials miss calls, but that was two of the worst. Two know? of the worst. Yeah. Um, they like, listen, we don't care. <laughs> we want him out of the league. We want we want him out. Do what you got to do. Yeah, make it happen. Matter of fact, speaking of out of the league, Phoenix Suns are being sold. Yep, four billion. Four billion. Four billion. Mm-hmm. Four billion. To a former uh, Michigan player, actually. Yeah, it was a walk on at Michigan State. Actually, them walk ons at um, uh, Michigan and Michigan State be coming up lovely. Palenka is a uh, GM, and mm-hmm. yeah, this guy's an owner. Well, this dude was a, uh, a billionaire mortgage lender, yeah. I guess. Uh, so he's uh, said something about being a walk on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Amongst other things. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't one in five, five out this month. Yeah. He didn't tell me that was Ray Jackson. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you just told me that was Jimmy King and Ray Ray. I would have been like, okay. Yep. So, so we done with the NBA. We was on the gridiron. Yeah. I, I, I mean. I, only thing about the NBA I think I had is why was Pat Beverly giving the too small sign the other last night against <laughs> down down, <laughs> down, down twenty six. This is this is why I don't watch, man. This is why down twenty six. <laughs> Yo, have you guys been checking the videos I've sent you? Um. Where the guy is just breaking down how many times is a carry, how many times is a walk. Like he's just showing you everybody's carrying the ball. They're breaking yeah. the rules nonstop. Left That's why it's, it's, it's Reggie Jackson. That it's was Reggie Jackson who was carrying the ball all them times. Oh, it was Reggie Jackson who was just carry, carry, cross. Yeah, I mean, he, he should just put a handle on walking it. Walking the ball up like this. Yeah. They got one on John Morant. They got one on Julius Randle. They got uh He's just sitting there. And that's supposed to be the emphasis this year, too. Yes. It was, it was early on. It's, yeah. it was early on. It's, it's, it's entertainment, man. They don't care. Yep. It's horrible. It's horrible. Seven steps to the basket, whatever. It's 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 getting bad. It's getting bad. It's out of here. And it's going to filter down to the younger um, players. Mm-hmm. That, that's where it gets really bad. Yeah, man. It's like, you know. You know, yep. like you said, it's entertainment because it's like the rules just out the window and it spoils the game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. All right. So uh, to the other WWF of sports, the NFL. That Move. Buffalo Miami game was great Saturday night. But I was yelling at the TV for three quarters because Miami refused to run the ball. Yeah. They're gashing Buffalo with runs, and they did not want to run the ball. They kept throwing and throwing and throwing. And I could not understand it for the life of me. And why don't why don't they use Waddle and Tyreek Hill on some reverses or something? Just I, it I was poorly a oh, poorly coached game. I thought mm-hmm. the, the game was good. It was a good quality football game, but I just couldn't understand why they wouldn't run the ball. Yeah. Tua played better than I expected him to, um, but that was a really good, real, real good game. That was a good game. Yeah. What was the final score? Uh, I think they lost by what was it twenty not thirty two to twenty nine something. Yeah, like thirty two twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. lost by three. Mm-hmm. You know, and, I mean, and look, I expected Buffalo to win it because it's in Buffalo, 
Um, but it was definitely much better game and much closer. Um, and like you said, too, I didn't think would do anything in the cold and the snow. Yeah. You know, but. And they had been getting blown out of the, the, the previous two weeks. So that was good, at least to show. But they still have a, uh, uh, a three game losing streak. And they got Green Bay this week. Yeah. So and Green Bay basically have to win out to get in the playoffs. So yeah. it'll be a good, interesting uh last few weeks because a lot of teams are, are, are alive right now. And is that game at Green Bay? No, it's in Miami. Okay. okay. But the last two, if Green Bay can win that, they got the last two at home. And the and the last two is against Minnesota, mm-hmm. which had that crazy comeback in the and in, in the in the Lions. Let me tell you, if Tough. Jeff Saturday keeps his job at the end of the season, I'm going to laugh. He's you not. know, I, I listened to uh, Joe Budden's podcast and um, Zaire Franklin, the linebacker for um, Indy, was on there. And apparently they really like Jeff Saturday. They like him as a coach. They like his how he – his presence in the locker room and his knowledge of the game. Wow. I, didn't, I, I didn't expect to good for them. Yeah. Well, that would be the signature loss to justify firing that cat because yeah. you should know by I mean, particularly with him, I thought he was just gonna run the ball down their throat the second half. I mean, there's no way you should really lose a game up 33 nothing. Yeah, just three nothing. It's, 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 clock, it's just, clock management at that point. Just run the ball. Yep. And now Jonathan Taylor is out for the year. Yeah. So. It's, and your boy Matt Ryan is on the wrong side of the biggest comeback in NFL history and the worst comeback in Super Bowl history. <laughs> Good old <laughs> Matt Ryan. Matt Ice. Oh. Matty Ice. That's crazy. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, that was, that was nuts. Yeah. So what's Tom going to do? Um, go to Miami, San Francisco. Nah, San Francisco, I think. Miami, we don't want him. Tua, Tua, they like Tua. He coming they, home, and they have the draft picks to go to get a quarterback if they don't, if they don't, if they don't really uh, intend on sticking with him. But I think do they, they like, like Tua. Do they like Tua enough to pay Tua? I think they do. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they sold on his health yet, but I think as far as his play. He's he's been balling and he's definitely shown us, I think, that he knows how he knows what to do with Tyreek and he can utilize both of them. You know what I'm saying? So it's just everything else around him getting the reps up for him that, you know, sustain that there. So I think it's just if anything, it's about more his health than uh, than about, you know, his ability. No, I, li- I like to I just think um, if you got a chance to get Brady, you just going to go get Brady. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, the jury's out on tour, you know, still. Uh, I, I, this Buffalo game meant a lot to sway me to, you know, get, give pause to throwing him under the bus. Uh, but, you know, I'm still questionable about his arm in terms of being able to, uh, like, you know, just really make that Waddle, Tyree Hill thing work to championship level. I think they're going to need a new quarterback, but I don't think it's Brady. I don't, and, and I don't think Brady's going to go to San Francisco either. I think he's going to retire. I, I mean, at this point, uh, he should retire. Because, um, you know, with the, with the greats, once they start to deteriorate, it happens quickly. It's not a slow thing. You know, He got one more. He got one good. He got one big game left in him, and that's in January, first week of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Against the Cowboys? Yep. <laughs> I hope not. But, uh, you know. We- that's what it is. Are they are they really going to win two out of three to hold off that lead? That's what we really need to be asking ourselves. It, that's what's going. That's what's going Any, down. Anybody could win that uh, division right now. Yeah, they they gonna win it. They gonna win it just so they can do it. They go do do just that in week one of the playoffs. And any of them could beat the Cowboys in week one of the playoffs. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, do, we, how, how do we get from like we we get we went from they the favorites to win the Super Bowl to. They the favorites to lose in the first round. Revealing who they are, who they've been, who that, have always been. That was like three finding years. ways to lose. That's, That's the Cowboys, the Cowboys fans always believe the hype for some reason. 
You know, yeah. you drink the Kool-Aid, man. And I don't know why. It's the Jim Jones Kool-Aid. Oh. Jerry Jones Kool-Aid. Nah, it's the curse of it's Jimmy Johnson. Jim Still Jones. lives. <laughs> the curse. Man. I mean, Dak came back off an of injury. Everybody's on uh, Cooper Rush, Cooper Rush. Now nah, I sit Cooper Rush down. It ain't Cooper Rush. Dak come in there. And he ain't do much more than Cooper Rush did. Yeah. Well, they only they were averaging 18 points a game with Cooper Rush. They've averaged 32 a game with Dak. Yeah. That's two touchdowns. Yeah. So I mean, that's I 14 points is a big deal. But I, I get it. I, I get the. I get yeah, the. Yeah, and, it, and, it's, and it's leading the NFL. You can't discredit. They 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 have the number one offense in football since Dak's been back. His interceptions are a problem, but he's still what six and six and two since he's been back. In the defense, in the defense, for some reason, since he's been back, is just like went off a cliff. So he wait, oh, so it's the injuries. He's the problem with the defense. No, 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 no. That, I, that, that's not that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying no, it's an injury. the irony with the Cowboys is when Dak comes back. The defense falls off a cliff. Right, right. right. Now nah, the defense right. showed you. They showed you who they were when they put it on uh, Minnesota, forty to three. It's oh. just. Uh, it, it's. I think it's. It's the residual effect of losing. Um, you know, our quarterback losing Brown. Because I you, mean, you really think Anthony Brown was that big a deal? No, I think that the the lack of depth behind him. Yeah, I mean, he was he wasn't good. He was solid, but the lack of depth behind him just exposed that whole side. Can I ask you this question? Does Anthony Brown rush the quarterback? Because I haven't. They had forty sacks the first seven weeks, and I haven't seen people getting sacks in the last five. So, is that Anthony Brown? No, they're not I getting home. Disappeared. And and the corners look better when you're getting pressure on the quarterback, and they haven't been getting any pressure on the quarterback. And run um, running backs are still gauging them for big plays. The fact that they had a third and fifteen in overtime and couldn't stop. Any Joneses, anybody named Jones, they couldn't stop on Sunday. You know, Zay, whether it was Zay or Marvin, <laughs> it's a problem. And, you know, what, I, I said it last week. I said it the week before. Can Is there is, is Lawrence Taylor Jr. going to play soon? Because Lawrence Taylor is rolling over in his bed right now. He ain't in his grave. He's rolling over in his bed because that's blasphemy. <laughs> well, you know, Cowboy fans just have this penchant for believing year after year that they're going to win <laughs> game after game. Fugazi. It's not. All through the Romo that. years, Fugazi. It's, it, look. Quincy Carter. They tell, Look, the Cowboys show you every year they're not Drew going to get done. <laughs> All these jokers. You know? Chad Hutchinson. <laughs> they're just not going to get it done. It doesn't matter how much they pay the quarterback, whoever the quarterback is, they're not going to get it done. And – the sooner Cowboy fans believe, you know what, we're not going to get it done. That might be when they get it done. But you know what the thing is? The thing about it, again, is that with the Cowboy p players in their in the, um, locker room don't understand is that they get everybody's Super Bowl shot. They don't get that. They think they're going to roll in, and that's going to be it. Gary Hogaboom. It was Hogaboom. Yeah. Woo-hoo. That was a good one. <laughs> but but yeah, oh. they get everybody's they get everybody's best shot every week. Mm -hmm. That's what they get. Yeah, and they not and they not ready for everybody's best shot every week. And even even their owner is out of his mind because he thought he he comes on on Monday and be like, well, I don't think Dak played a bad game. I didn't. Oh, think he, he called it this week outstanding. He said yeah. Dak played outstanding. I'm like, yeah, see. Jerry, and that's where your problem. The whole organization, the fan base, everything is delusional. Listen, I saw the, I saw, the, I saw the first pick that he threw in the third quarter. That was a horrible pass, right? But the second one wasn't his fault. I'm not. I'm gonna no. be real with it. It wasn't. It wasn't. Noah Brown got to catch that ball. Period. Yeah. That's it. But that still don't take away the fact that you know the drive before that, you know, wave off Kellen Moore, Dak, like. <laughs> don't don't throw deep on third and ten when they got one timeout left, and all you gotta do is run the ball and make them burn it again. And now they have zero timeouts and and punting. Yeah, <laughs> it just makes it made no sense. Like that that's part of the problem too. So you have too many people, too many blind people leading each other, um, and no one knows where the where the nut is. That's pretty much it. Well, you have just enough games to to hopefully. Work all the kinks out. I mean, first, 
you have to show up against Philly this week. I mean, you have to play. You have to. They going. You know? know. Philly is 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 making a they're making a mockery of the game because because he could he could play. Ted, Ted they're just not going to play him because they three games ahead. So yeah. that's it. So wow, I mean, it's over. Like you're Garden not catching Mitch. Philly. That's Garden that's a, that's a pipe dream. Three hundred. If they if they blow Philly out, I wouldn't even care. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody would care because it's expected. Is it, this doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, but Philly need to watch out though. Everybody, uh, they they got uh, they got the Saints and then the Giants to close out the season, and both those teams are 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 still fighting for playoff lives. So while the Saints, with uh, you know Jalen Hurts playing, didn't seem like a formidable opponent, you know if Cowboys blow out the Eagles this weekend and Garner Minshew looks like trash. And the Saints are still alive for the playoffs, and they have to play Philly, you know, the next to last weekend. Then it's not over. Cowboys still can win the division. Philly can still drop from first to fifth. It can happen. The Cliff, fact it ain't that, happening, man. The, the I fact love you, baby. Every year we go in. If <laughs> this, if that, if this, if that means it's not. Going it, it ain't. Can't ifs and buts, candy and nuts. Merry Christmas. It ain't working. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm I'm happy that they lost their quarterback, and we'll see where the where the chips fall. Man, That's he's not what. hurt. He just taking a rest for the next. Yeah, time. Did, you, did, you, did you see that fall? Did you see the fall? Mm-hmm. That, uh, he's, he's all right. Taking Christmas off. Well, that, that wasn't a sack, was it? He he ran. It was not nah, running. Yeah, running. I think he was caught from behind. I don't think yeah, it was, it was a positive sack. run. It's part of positive. Yeah, I, think, yeah, I think he was caught from behind. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's taking the week off. The dude fell on him. Yeah, he he's fell on. Mm-hmm. Now he he's, when Joe he strained his passing, clavicle. Huh? He strained it. Strained it. Sorry. Yeah, it's not broken. Uh, think. Um, see now you know these other calls that have happened over the year. Um, when you can't. Well, that's it. That's call, when you're you sacked. Yeah, yeah, you have to. When you get sacked, you can't. Right. Yeah, you can't let your body weight well have the appearance of letting your body weight. You know, fall on on uh, on the quarterback, which is what they get. Um, what uh, my man saying, Nick huh? Bosa on all the time. <laughs> Nick Bosa right. gets called penalty all the time because when he sacks a quarterback, he sacks a quarterback like he's supposed to, but he gets the personal foul every time. Yeah, you know, I was just gonna say that because, you know, some of these guys get hit and there's no flag, and some of these guys get hit and it's a flag, and it always the same thing. So you got to protect all all the quarterbacks, quarterbacks. not yeah. just not just a few of them. You got to protect yeah. all the quarterbacks. Yep. You know. So yeah, yeah. I noticed yep. there was no flag on that play. I, I thought there'd be a flag on it, but he, they've he, had some butt um, pass uh, roughing the passer calls this year. I mean, some oh, butt yeah. ugly ones. Yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Hey, but hey, Cliff, I'm gonna tell you, man. I love your faith and hope. In no. the Cowboys, man, and, and what what they could do, it, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. No, let, no, it's it's. I'm, that's that's the hope in me, but what I will say is, um, you know, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm leaning towards how West feel and and the Cowboys and how Hawk feels. Fugazi, dude. The cow. If the Cowboys, if there's a way to lose, they're gonna find a way to lose that game. They don't know how to. They don't. They're not. They're front runners, man. They're all front runners. Yeah, they are. That's it. Yeah, man. So, what what's the overall scene look like? Um, AFC, NFC uh, matchup. Buffalo's got the first seed. Um, and uh, right now, but watch out out for Cincinnati. They come. Cincinnati Cincinnati looks good. And Cincinnati looks real good. KC is right there. But those are the top three teams, and he still got uh, Tennessee's going to win their division and make the playoffs as a four seed. Um, and then there's a dog fight for that fi- yeah, fight, I guess. But, but what's hold so tight, though, because uh, Jacksonville is a game behind the Titans, and they they end the season playing each other. Yeah, that's true. So too. They, if, they can, if they can make up one game, and Jacksonville's hot. So, you know, we're, we, we're smashing the Cowboys for losing that game. But Jacksonville's been one of the toughest teams the, the past month in football. Tri- well, Trevor Lawrence. Nah, I'm not, it's not because they play Jacksonville. It's not. I'm nah, not, I'm not that, smashing that's the Cowboys. Why, 
that it's proves just... that proves your metal when you go away and you play a team that's solid and you yeah. Like yeah. that's after coming off that lousy win against the Texans, you know, you go you you go here, you want to show and prove that we're that dominant team and there's yeah. no question. No, but but I, I but I think we need to like when it comes to evaluating what happened. That was a team loss. Oh, it yeah. wasn't the quarterback. No, it wasn't no, it was, the it defense. Was, it, was it was a team. It was an organizational was loss yeah. because when they're down by when they're down three and or four and somebody leads them down in the fourth quarter and, and takes the lead, they made the play to get the lead back. Right, the, the, mm-hmm. the fourth quarter drive got the lead back, thirty four thirty one. Then they get the turnover. You think the game is over, but the OC doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Mm. A minute and 27 seconds left, and you can't run that clock out? All you need is 10 yards? Yeah. And you run two gimmick running plays? Come on, man. And then that, and then a bomb. And then a, a bomb. Three go routes down. on third down. I mean, yeah, that was this this terrible And I'm going to ask that. another Cowboy fan, Cliff, has anybody seen Michael Gallup? Is he still in uniform? Uh, yeah, I'm not. Come on, man. Can Noah, Brown, out, Noah yeah. Brown can't be a second best receiver. Period. No. Period. So, so and so no offense to Noah Brown. He's not a, he's not number two. No. With T.Y., when's he will get activated? It doesn't matter. T.Y. is just going to be somebody that can go downfield so they can throw CD, CD the ball and gallop the ball underneath because they're not, they're not, they don't have breakaway speed. No. But if you have someone that can get deep, they don't have anybody that can get deep. And that's the problem. You, when you don't have a threat, the, the, the coverage is just kind of – they can play bump and run on these guys pretty much. Mm-hmm. You know? He'll help, though. Yeah, he'll, he'll help he a little help. bit. Yep. But so, what's the Chiefs giving you right now? The Chiefs almost lost to the Texans. Everybody was killing the Cowboys for losing to the Texans. The Chiefs uh, went to overtime with the Texans. Yeah, that's you right. Know? Yeah. I mean, the Chiefs aren't playing at the level I, I thought they would at this point in the season. They don't have a good defense either. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. It's the ability to close out these games. That's what, that's what you know, the problems these teams are having. But um, we we can't overlook. There's a lot of parity in football, yo. These yeah. teams are hot. The, 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 the margins are razor thin, which is why, you know, none of these playoffs uh, uh, races are, are – they're all going to come down to the last game, you know? Yeah, anybody can Except the 49ers. We're, we're, we're secure. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Purdy. No, and I, I think Purdy's showing and proving, and they won't need Tom Brady, bro. But don't get it twisted. You know, Purdy can get hurt, too. <laughs> wow. Everybody else getting hurt. Wow. <laughs> y'all, be all, y'all be playing Joe Johnson. <laughs> hey, hey, and I'm all right with that because I've seen that no matter who we put at quarterback, we all right. That's going to have some consequences, yeah. Coach. Because yeah. we have coaching. Yeah, yeah you, do. Do. Mm-hmm. you do. Yeah, system football, bro. Nothing yep. beats that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plug and play. Yep. 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 And Buffalo, the Ravens. Ravens is out of it, right? No, they're still in it. They're still in yeah, it? They're still in it. Wow, everybody's still in it. But, but yeah. Lamar, um, I know he missed practice again today, so – um, you know, they're they're leaning towards him again, not playing this week. So, um, and they got another tough game too. And Cincinnati just took the lead in that division, so they're no longer even leading the division. Yeah, I, I think Lamar is at the point now. Like, I'm not going to put myself in a position. Yeah, to get hurt. Um, Listen, he he's not getting he didn't get paid when he was supposed to. He's got an MVP. They don't get any help for him at all. Yep. He has no running game. He they give him a tight end. That's it. He yep. has nothing. And a in a in a fifty year old fast guy, you know, Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson. Give the man some help. But yep. and then you want to judge him as if he's gotten all the help in the world, and you don't want to pay the man. He already got an MVP. But that's 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 how we do it. Yeah. So he, he's a risk he might, because he of might the way well he plays. Sit out, you know, and wait to get his money. That's it. Yeah, I would do the same thing, but they was they were saying he's a risk because of the way he plays. Hmm. Okay. You know who they got? You know who gonna get treated like royalty? Joe Burrow. Oh, Joe Burrow's about to. Oh yeah. He about to break the bank. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it may not no, be a bad no, thing. But no questions asked. And it'll be a year early because he's gonna do it. They're gonna do it this off season. They ain't gonna wait till next year. 
Yeah. When he's when it's when he's when he when he finishes his rookie contract, they're gonna do it this summer. Him and Herbert or whatever whatever his name yep. is. Herbert. They're Herbert. gonna get paid this year. They're supposed to wait till next season, but they're gonna do it this summer. Watch. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the that's the formula. Jalen Hurts may get early though. He may get paid this year too though. I think he gonna get paid. Well, he gonna have that MVP. He had an MVP. Well, Lamar had an MVP. That, that didn't help. What that mean? What that mean? Yeah, I, I think I think Lori is a different owner though. I think Philly's owner is a little different. You know, because the Philly fan base is a little different. As Donovan, and it'll be smart, particularly yeah, sure. with him. They, I mean, Donovan he did play there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, not Donovan played. He did play there. Randall played there. I mean, he listen. They they know, and Jalen Hurts the only got gotten better. His characters, you know, uh, un- unquestioned. You know, he works. He's a coach's. He's a coach's son. But I, hey, one thing I don't, I don't, th- I don't think um, Donovan or Randall were ever considered underpaid while they were there. Though I think they got. I don't, I don't think. I don't, I don't think he's gonna have a problem getting his money. Yeah, he's he's, and, and they could. Well, depending on if he could MVP, but he still was a second round pick. You know what I'm saying? So you know. There's a slot for that, so they don't really have to. But we shall, we timing of it all, we shall see. Well, the timing we, we of shall it. see. It it will it will say volumes. It will say volumes, like it always does. Because mm-hmm. you you best record and MVP in the year that you're supposed to get your contract. That says a lot. Yeah. But at this. We're giving him the MVP now. I, I think they're trying to figure out ways not to give it to him. Yeah, they're gonna get Burrow and 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 um and Buffalo boy gonna be right in the conversation. Yeah, they, well, they it's three games up. left. It's three games left. The only two names they talk about is Hurts and uh, uh Mahomes. No, about nobody else. No, they said that they no, said no, the dark horses is were creeping Burrow up in and, um, conversation. and Josh Allen. They said they were dark horses still. They're still in it. Yeah, if Burrow wins out, nah, man. Win. Yeah, the the best, the best favorite season, the best favorite right is, now is Mahomes at minus three hundred. But since Hurts got uh, hurt, he actually it's a three way tie for the third spot right now. It's actually Jalen Hurts, it's Burrow, and it's uh, Josh Allen. But all three of them are plus five fifty. So mm. I'm like five to one. Yeah, so how how could Josh Allen be ahead of Patrick Mahomes? Well, Buffalo be, because Buffalo is the number one seed right now in the AFC. Buffalo's the number one seed, and they beat Kansas City already. And yeah. he, I mean, he, he hasn't been to, lighting it up. Josh Allen, he lost to Joe Burrow, and he's been winning lately, carrying the Chiefs to a what? What are they? What's their record? Uh, um, 10 and 4. All, 10 and, all, 11 and 3. 11 and 3. Uh, 11 and 3. Both of them are 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 11 and and, and and that's because Buffalo is the number one seed in the, in the AFC right now. I, I mean, I just think it should be Mahomes and Hurts and nobody else in the country. Nobody else. That's it. That's my opinion. We, we yeah, but but the Burrow's been has been playing out of his mind the second, you know, the because yeah, the, the way whole, everybody's the whole that, season, you got one dude lost one game, and this dude lost three games. Yeah, but um whole season. Like, if y'all, wanna, if y'all really want to have real talk absolutely. conversation, if we want to really break it down, I mean, the bottom line is, if you're not, if it's not Jalen Hurts, that's if that's the MVP, and it's not Mahomes, the real MVP is AJ Brown. That's on Philadelphia. That I mean, but they're never going to give it to a wide receiver. Uh, Tyreek Hill and, and AJ Brown are putting up historic seasons. Both of them are yeah. playing out of their minds. But since we always focus on the, I don't know why they just call it the best quarterback award and stop calling it the MVP, because. You know, it's, there's other players that are doing big things around the NFL, and right, it's not right. just the quarterback. 
You're right. But at the same time, with in Jalen Hurst's case, he's putting up a lot of rushing yards. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I so don't disagree with Jalen Hurst. He's, he's, he's not just he's throwing the ball to A.J. Brown. No, like, it, should be, it should be it should be Jalen Hurst to really to lose with – I mean, Mahomes and Jalen Hurst, but I'm saying yeah. if you're going to look at another Philadelphia person, he's yeah. ahead of the guys yes. we're also naming because from, from week one to week 15, he's been consistent throughout the season. Those, oh, those two been, players <clears> – <throat> It's been Jalen Hurts' award, I think, uh, particularly up until this point right now. But we can't diminish the last three games of the season are going to be important. And, you know, they, a couple of these guys can separate themselves because all three of those guys right now are fighting for the number one seed. Yeah. You know, it's, those, it's, it's just those three teams. So yeah, how do you know. finish out, you know? Well, we already know it's a quarterback award. So yeah. that's that's the bottom line. Yep. Yep, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Man. Oh, oh, the sun. The sun's deal includes the Mercury, the WNBA. Talent. Yeah, they both. They're both on the docket. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Um. Okay, so that's the MVP question. Who's the best quarterback in the NFL today? Mahomes. Mahomes. Okay. Mahomes. Yeah. 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 Howdy. Nah, man. Forget that. It's Tom Brady, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Mahomes. Yeah, <laughs> JT says Mahomes. What up, JT? Skip Skip said it's uh Tom Brady. <laughs> Skip's crazy. Yeah, man. So all right, man. It was, it was a good one today. But we we, we, didn't, we didn't go down. We, we want to go down and make predictions. Cliff, you got the over under? Oh, I made my boys. Top dogs. We, we, we're not picking any, any other ones. This is my. Uh... Okay. You got the schedule ready, Wes? I don't even have it. No, I don't. I just have my other phone. I don't have my other phone with me. Where's that? Zatch, bets, bets, top dogs. I can't. I know something. Somebody over the commanders. No, it's uh, my top dogs, the Giants. And the Commanders. Okay. And the Bengals, I see, is your best bet. Cowboys, best, best. Okay. Okay. All right. right. What what you got again? Say one more time. He's got the Bengals and the Cowboys as the best bets, and the top dogs are the Giants and the Commanders. No, yeah. Jaguars, NFC East, yo, and the Bengals. <laughs> NFC East is looking good, you know. They are. Yeah, they, got they probably teams. won't make it as Commanders, but you know, that'd be good. So the Commanders could get bounced. Yeah, it's looking that way now. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought that they um. Oh, yeah, but who who got? I mean, Detroit has the 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 biggest chance to catch them because right now they're behind Detroit and Seattle, and Seattle can't get a win for nothing, and they no. got a won a tough game again this week too on the road. And Detroit, Detroit's playing good football right now. They are. Who Seattle got this week? Hold on, let me let me pull them up. <clears throat> I forgot who they have. Um, they got the Chiefs. Yeah. Mm. Seattle got the Chiefs, and Detroit has um, – Panthers. They should get that. So if – What the Panthers giving you, man? They 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 kind of stepped up. They, they were right there, but then they got blown out this week. So, but, you know, them, the Saints, um, are right behind. Uh, Saints got the Browns. Mm. Who the Browns just beat? The Ravens. Ravens. Wow. How did Sean do? Played better. Yeah. I mean, the man ain't played in seven hundred days. Woo. Yep. All right, so we got um. Tomlin still got a shot to get uh five hundred. Right, so, so Thursday yep. we got Jaguars Jets. Uh, I'm going to Jaguars. I go Jaguars too. 
Yeah, Jaguars playing well. I'm going Jaguars. I'm going Jags. Um, Saturday. Ooh, some good games. Commanders 49ers. I can take 49ers. I'm going 49ers. I'm going Commanders. Ooh. I'm definitely going 49ers. Oh, but <laughs> you know, I'm going for the outside, uh, outright win. I think they'll cover that seven either way. But, they, you know, they have to win. What's an- oh, it's, it's, an- it's another good one. Seahawks, Chiefs. Chiefs. I'm going Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs. Chiefs. Um, Giants, Vikings. Vikings. Giants. Giants. Vikings. Uh, I would have said this was a good one before that stupid play they did, but uh, Bengals, Patriots. Bengals. 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 That's going to be tough, though, because it's at Patriots, isn't it? It's at, yeah, it's at New yeah. England. That's going to be tough, but I got, I got Bengals. Oh, I, 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 need, I need y'all to be real, real, real right now, right? How does that last play happen? How does that breakdown happen? How does that play play from the Bobby Boucher movie going on in you know football right now? Is it is it a rebellion again? Was it a rebellion? Come on, really? That was the worst play ever. That's the yeah. He he just he got caught up. He was he was trying to. He just he just got caught up. But think about it from the Raiders' perspective. Their last four games, they had a walk off overtime win. A walk off overtime win. Then they had Baker Mayfield drive down and they lose yeah. last second. And then they have that win. <laughs> That's their last four weeks, yo. What why does it why doesn't uh your boy just take the knee? Like there's, so, uh, there's so many things. That what what would it try to do too much, bro? Let's just take it to overtime. What are you doing? I mean, not only did he get the ball, I mean, the first lateral when he got the lateral, not only did he run back ten yards, then he threw it back another like twelve yards. What are you? <laughs> like they, they might like, want to investigate him. Warner. We're looking at Pop Warner, bro. Yeah. Like, it was great. Yeah, Yo, I it's mean, it's the it's the exact same play from that Bobby Boucher movie. <laughs> so, but the, is it like coaching? Like, listen, this is what we're doing, guys. This is what we want you to do. Like, they just went. We, like, this is what we're gonna. Uh, we're they, gonna they all, they, they all went rogue. rogue. The whole team just went rogue on the last play. Yeah, they went rogue. But uh, some people are saying they attribute that to the uh, Patriots just not having an uh, offensive coordinator this year. You know, no, no offensive mind, no coordinator, and they just because ultimately it comes down to coaching. You know what I'm saying, but you wouldn't expect that from a Bill Belichick. Bill team. Belichick. Exactly, That's Bill Belichick is not calling it. How do you not? <laughs> you wouldn't expect that. From yeah, he, he's not calling that play. That's just <laughs> no. lateral until we get a touchdown. He's not no, calling. He's not call- That's not the. That wasn't the play. Like, <laughs> nah. I think they was like, "What's the man? But we gonna do? Why right, we got this break? Yeah, <laughs> watch yeah. this break." <laughs> you know, that's just crazy. All right, that's, that's all right. Cool. Uh, the big one, Eagles Cowboys. It ain't big no more. I still I got, got the Eagles. It's big. I got Cowboys. I got the Eagles. I got yeah. the cow. I, I got the Cowboys. Without oh! the quarter. Without the quarterback. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> Not you, it out. huh? I'm trying to figure. It out. I mean. Man, like the Cowboys will just let you down. They just <laughs> they're gonna win they're this wild. game. They're, they're gonna, gonna win this game because it don't matter. Lose, yeah. It's just huh? They're gonna win this game because it doesn't matter, and it's gonna be the hype train again. That's just how it is. I don't this game means nothing. You. <laughs> huh? I don't know if they could beat Gardner Minshew. <laughs> You're probably right about that, but it, it, I, 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 I just feel like they're gonna win this game. Ah, uh, that's funny. Because it don't matter. Um, I'm going. I'm going with the Cowboys. All right, Sunday. Sunday we got three games, but uh, only one I think is pretty good. Packers, Dolphins. I'm going Dolphins. Yeah, Dolphins. I'm going Packers, man. I'm going Packers. Aaron Rodgers is on one. He's trying to make the playoffs. 
that that's it because the Monday game is I think shit. Chargers Colts. Um, Chargers Colts. Yeah. Keep that one quiet. <laughs> I got the Colts. <laughs> I got the Chargers if, if we're gonna pick it. Yeah, um, the Chargers and whatnot. Yeah, I gotta go Chargers. Oh, <laughs> you got you got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, <laughs> um, Matty Ice. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, they responded from the worst. Uh, yeah. <laughs> come back ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's the you know that's the NFL this year. You know who knows. Yeah. Respond. That, that, that's what it's all about. How you respond. Yep. Yeah, man. We shall see. Hey, gentlemen. Uh, till next week. Hey, hey, happy holidays to everybody. Happy, happy holidays, holidays everybody. Yeah. Uh, Merry happy Christmas. Merry Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Yes. 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 Everything. Because I celebrate all of them. Exactly. <laughs> happy Kwanzaa. Be, everything. You know, you rock with Kyrie, so you know we celebrate. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there, yeah, man. You know who you are, huh? You know what we celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know who I am. That's right. So yeah, man. Great show. And uh, until next week. All right. All right. Peace, Peace, Peace. Peace, JT. We gotta have JT on the show. <laughs>